a discussion with spinal cord and uh, we are going to discuss spinal cord under the following headings uh, we will see the fissures and sulci the grey matter and the white matter and in the white matter the types of fibers present in it as well as the divisions of the white matter then we will see the tracts the important ascending and descending tracts and applied aspects related to it simultaneously we will see how to draw the cut section of the spinal cord showing both ascending as well as descending tracts so we will start with the cut section of the spinal cord so to draw the cut section of the spinal cord you should start with the central canal this is the central canal of the spinal cord surrounding the central canal you have grey matter this is the grey matter of the spinal cord here the grey matter which I am drawing is of thoracic segment so the grey matter is H shaped or butterfly shaped you can observe this is a grey matter so this grey matter which is surrounding the central canal is comma shaped on the other side and uh, both the comma shaped grey matter are connected by a transverse grey commissure so now to complete the white matter you have to draw a posterior median septum and you have to draw anterior median fissure so this is anterior median fissure it is quite deep this is posterior median septum then you have to complete the diagram this is anterior median fissure this is posterior median sulcus this is posterior median septum apart from that you have a sulcus here called as entrolateral and you have a sulcus here called as postrolateral sulcus so from here anterior median fissure Entrolateral sulcus, postrolateral sulcus, posterior median sulcus, and this is posterior median septum with the central grey matter and central canal surrounded by there is a white matter. So, this is how we have to start to draw the spinal cord cut section. Now, coming to the grey matter, as I told you, the grey matter consists of the neuronal cell bodies along with neuroglial cells and as well as blood capillaries. And when you see the grey matter here, as I told you it is butterfly shaped or H shaped, uh, you are going to see the ventral horn, this is called ventral horn, where I will mark it as VH, ventral horn, it is also called as motor horn and this is called as a dorsal horn or the sensory horn and the dorsal horn and the ventral horn you can see in throughout the part of the spinal cord, whereas lateral horn you may not see uh, in the entire length of the spinal cord preferably you will be seeing the lateral horn in the thoracic segments and upper one or two lumbar segments that is called as thoracolumbar outflow because this lateral horn mainly belonging to the uh, the autonomic nervous system as well as you are going to see between S2 to OS, S3, S4 segments of the spinal cord so this is a ventral horn, this is lateral horn and this is the dorsal horn and these horns are also called as uh, motor ventral horn is also called motor horn the dorsal horn is called as sensory horn so we will discuss uh, related to that why these are called motor horn and the dorsal horn now from the ventral horn to the ventral lateral sulcus or entrolateral sulcus the fibers will come out from here also you can see the nerve fibers will out. So this is ventral horn, this is ventral root, this part is called ventral root. This is dorsal horn, this is called dorsal root. Okay. So ventral horn it is a motor horn, ventral root is a motor root because the fibers, the motor fibers are coming out through this particular route. Whereas the sensory fibers are entering or passing through the dorsal root and entering through the dorsal horn. So that's why it is called as sensory root and this is called as motor root. And this ventral root and the dorsal root, both sensory and motor root, join together to form a spinal nerve. It is mixed nerve because it consists of both sensory fibers as well as motor fibers this spinal nerve further divides into two parts 
to supply the ventral line dorsal aspect of the body so this is called ventral ramus this part is called ventral ramus this is called dorsal ramus so you have ventral horn ventral root ventral ramus dorsal horn dorsal root and the dorsal ramus this is motor this is sensory and this is the spinal nerve which is mixed and ventral ramus as well as dorsal ramus which is supplying the ventral part of the body as well as the dorsal part of the body is also mixed now you might have observed i have drawn a small bulging over related to the dorsal root this is called as dorsal root ganglion here the cell bodies of the uh, sensory uh, fibers will be located here so those will be discussed uh, later now coming to the white matter the white matter is just surrounding this particular gray matter is divided into uh, divisions or the columns so you can observe between the anterior median fissure and the ventral horn this part is called as anterior column between anterolateral and posterolateral sulcus this part is called as lateral column and this part is called as posterior column so the white matter is divided into anterior column lateral column and the posterior column and within the white matter you have sensory fibers the motor fibers and uh, association fibers sensory fibers will enter through the dorsal root whereas motor fibers will come out through the ventral root that i have told you so the fibers the sensory fibers the motor fibers as well as association fibers will be present in the uh, anterior column lateral column and the posterior column preferably the sensory fibers are present in the posterior column and uh, anterior column mainly uh, is having the uh, the motor fibers whereas the lateral column is having both sensory as well as motor fibers so the tracks we are going to discuss now now in this diagram i am going to draw on one side the ascending tract showing the other side i will show you the uh, the descending tracts so that but however both ascending as well as descending tracts are present on both the sides now first i will draw the ascending tracts so in the posterior column you have fibers this is called as posterior column fibers the detail we will discuss then you have another ascending fibers a group of ascending fibers called as the anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract this is called anterior spino cerebellar tract this is called posterior spino cerebellar tract this is called posterior or dorsal column fibers dorsal column fibers apart from these ascending fibers in the lateral column you have lateral spinothalamic tract and in the anterior column here anterior spinothalamic these are the important ascending fibers which we are going to discuss posterior column fibers anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract this is lateral spinothalamic tract lateral spinothalamic tract fibers this is anterior spinothalamic tract fibers these are all ascending fibers ascending fibers are nothing but sensory fibers they will carry the information from different parts of the body to the central nervous system is also called as afferent fibers or afferent nervous system where they will carry the information towards the uh, central nervous system so it can be called as ascending tracts or the afferent afferent tracts now coming to the descending fibers in the descending one these are nothing but the motor fibers or these are also called as efferent fibers so you have a most important one that is cortico spinal tract which is located over here it is also called as lateral cortico spinal tract and just into to that you have rubro spinal tract so this is lateral cortico spinal tract and this is rubro spinal tract apart from that you have anterior cortico spinal tract this one is anterior cortico spinal tract then you have tecto spinal tract then you have vestibulo spinal tract then you have medial and lateral reticulo spinal tract these are all the important one uh, descending <coughs> and the sending tract lateral cortico spinal tract the rubrospinal tract then uh, the anterior cortico spinal tract 
then tecto spinal tract vestibular spinal tract and medial and lateral reticulo spinal tract so one by one these tracts we are going to discuss now usually the tracts are named based on their origin and termination for example i'll give an example so this is a spinothalamic tract so the name is given because it starts from the spinal cord and ends at the level of thalamus so that's why it's called a spinothalamic tract and present in the lateral column that's what it's called lateral spinothalamic tract similarly you have anterior spinothalamic tract so these are then spino cerebellar tract starts from the spinal cord ends in the cerebellum so usually the tracts are named based on their origin and termination and in which column they are arrived so first we will discuss all about the ascending tracts ascending tracts already i told you these are sensory tracts or the afferent tracts first we will start with in the posterior column then followed by lateral spinothalamic and anterior spinothalamic tract before going into the detail of all these tracts uh, let me tell you usually the sensory fibers the or the ascending fibers are three uh, group of neuron three order neurons first order neuron second order neuron and third order neuron so from the receptor the fibers will come out and the cell bodies are located in the dorsal root ganglion that is a pseudo unipolar neuron whichever sensory fiber which are entering the cell bodies are located in the dorsal root ganglion that is a first order neuron this first order neuron sends its central process which enters into the spinal cord so what then the nerve fiber which is entering into the spinal cord the central process either it ends there or it may ascend upwards or slightly it may descend downwards and then cross to the posterior so there are various uh, ways through which the fibers will run upwards so it varies from uh, posterior column fibers and lateral spinothalamic tract as well as spinal cerebellar tract so what you have to understand the sensory fibers whatever the sensory fibers are there these are carried by three neurons first order neuron second order neuron and third order neuron and usually the crossing will takes place in the second order neuron so the crossing may takes place in the spinal cord or crossing may takes place in the uh, the brain stem so that we are going to discuss first we will see the posterior column fibers the posterior column fibers is also called as dorsal column fibers they will mainly carry the pressure sensation vibration then uh, uh, two points discrimination so these are all sensation and conscious proprioception these are all carried by the posterior column fibers this posterior column fibers are again divided into two groups here so the medial most group this group the medial most group of the posterior column is called as fasciculus gracilis and the lateral part is called as fasciculus cunatus so you have two groups in the posterior column that is fasciculus gracilis which is medial most and the lateral one is fasciculus cunatus now i'll see how the fibers will run now you see the first order neuronal cell body is located in the dorsal root ganglion this is the neuronal cell body of first order neuron so it has got uh, its process is a pseudo unipolar neuron and this is a central process now which enters so once it enters there it will not end there the first order neuron will not end there and it will go and occupy the posterior column so this central process this is a first order neuron which moves upwards so it moves upwards up to the medulla oblongata that is the brain stem now this will end in a nucleus that is in the brain stem where the second order neuron begins that's why the collection of that second order neuronal cell body it is called as nucleus so as there are two bundles here fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cunatus the fibers which are ending here the medial most fibers these are called as a uh, nucleus gracilis and simultaneously there will be one more nucleus that is called as nucleus cunatus so you have uh, two nuclei in the medulla oblongata so the first order neuron will end in nucleus gracilis and nucleus cunatus as the second order neuron begins the second order neuron will cross to the opposite side so this crossing of these fibers is called as internal arcuate fibers so once they cross to the opposite side and they will move upwards as a bundle of fiber that is called as medial lemniscus so that part is called as medial lemniscus so these medial lemniscus fibers will move upwards end in 
thalamus that is called ventro postro lateral nucleus of the thalamus from there the third order neuron begins it ends in the uh, sensory cortex that is area number 312 so first order neuron the neuron cell body is located in the dorsal root ganglion occupies the central process occupies the posterior column ascend upwards end in nucleus gracilis and nucleus cutis then cross to the opposite side that bundle of fibers once they cross they move upwards is called as medial meniscus they will end in the ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus from there the third order neuron begins and ends in the sensory cortex now so these fibers will carry the uh, conscious proprioception tactile discrimination and the pressure vibration all those things will be carried by this posterior column fibers so this is about the posterior column coming to the uh, spinothalamic tract fibers another ascending fiber similarly the cell bodies are located here only in the dorsal root ganglion the first order neuron cell body and the fibers will enter and will end in the dorsal hock so once they end here the second order neuron begins from this dorsal horn so these neurons will cross to the opposite side and occupy the lateral column so these are second order neuron in the dorsal column what, when we were talking these are first order neuron so the the fibers which are there in the lateral spinothalamic tract these are all second order already crossed fibers so these fibers will move upwards straight as these are second order neurons and crossing has already taken place they will move and they will directly move to the thalamus that is ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus from there the third order neuron begins and uh, it ends in the sensory cortex area number 312 similarly enters and uh, uh, the anterior spinothalamic tract fibers the fibers will end in the dorsal horn the second order neuron begins here crosses to the opposite side and occupies the anterior column that bundle of fiber becomes anterior spinothalamic tract fiber and moves upwards again so the lateral spinothalamic tract fiber and anterior spinothalamic tract fiber they move upwards in the brain stem together this is called as spinal meniscus and that second order neuron again ends in the thalamus ventro posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and from there the third order neuron begins ends in the sensory cortex this lateral spinothalamic tract fibers and anterior spinothalamic tract fiber so uh, they will also carry sensation whereas lateral spinothalamic tract fibers carry pain and temperature whereas anterior spinothalamic tract fiber carries the crude touch so this is about uh, the anterior and lateral spinothalamic tract fibers now you have dorsal and ventral or anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract that another ascending fibers so here what will happen again the neuronal cell body is located in the dorsal root ganglion uh, they enter in case of posterior spinocerebellar tract what will happen the fibers will turn back here only they won't cross there and once they occupy the posterior uh, spinocerebellar tract area they will move upwards so the cell bodies are located in the dorsal root ganglion end in the dorsal horn the neuron another neuron starts and goes back and occupies the same side posterior spinocerebellar tract area it moves upwards and ends in the cerebellum it tends in the cerebellum that is ipsilateral same side cerebellum it enters but the fibers pass through inferior cerebellar peduncle what is this inferior cerebellar peduncle the cerebellum is connected to the brain stem by three cerebellar peduncles superior cerebellar peduncle middle cerebellar peduncle and the inferior cerebellar peduncle inferior cerebellar peduncle connects middle oblongate to the cerebellum so the posterior spinocerebellar tract fibers they will be ending on the same side of the cerebellum by passing through the inferior cerebellar peduncle now coming to the anterior spinocerebellar tract fiber again the cell bodies are located in the dorsal root ganglion they will be ending in the dorsal horn but these second order neurons they will cross to the opposite side occupy the anterior spinocerebellar tract fiber so the posterior spinocerebellar tract fibers will come back and occupy the same side whereas the anterior spinocerebellar fibers they will cross to the opposite side and goes and occupy the on the opposite side lateral column and move upwards once they move upwards they will enter the same side cerebellum again they will come back to the same side cerebellum they will come back to the same side cerebellum by passing through the superior cerebellar peduncle so what i mean to say both 
anterior as well as posterior spinocerebellar tract fibers they will be ending in the ipsilateral uh, cerebellar hemisphere only difference is the posterior spinocerebellar tract fibers they will end by passing through the inferior cerebellar peduncle whereas uh, anterior will be passing through the superior cerebellar peduncle so this is about all uh, the ascending tracts the functions of this uh, the spinocerebellar tract includes uh, they will be mainly carrying unconscious proprioception conscious proprioception is by posterior column unconscious proprioception is by anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract fibers to summarize the functions of all the ascending tracts the posterior column fibers carry the two point discrimination then vibration then conscious proprioception tactile distribution everything is carried by posterior column fiber which is having two groups fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus unitus fibers lateral spinothalamic tract fibers carry pain and temperature anterior spinothalamic tract fibers carry root whereas uh, anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract carry the unconscious proprioception one more thing i want to add here related to the posterior column fibers the fasciculus gracilis is most medial this will be uh, having the fibers of the sacral as well as coccygeal sacral and the lumbar area and the lower thoracic and whereas fasciculus cunitus will be having the fibers of upper thoracic and cervical area so if you see the fibers from lateral to medial the lateral will be fasciculus cunitus so cervical fibers will be there followed by upper thoracic followed by lower thoracic followed by lumbar followed by sacral and coccygeal fibers will be arranged from lateral to medial direction descending tracts or the motor tracts or the efferent tracts are lateral corticospinal tract rubrospinal tract anterior corticospinal tract pectospinal tract vestibulospinal tract and medial and lateral reticulospinal tract in that mainly we will discuss about the lateral corticospinal tract and anterior corticospinal tract as i told you in the sensory system we have three neurons that is first order neuron second order neuron and third order neuron and the crossing will be taking place at the level of second order neuron similarly in the uh, case of uh, descending tracts we have two types of neurons upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron now we will see we will discuss about lateral corticospinal tract it is called as lateral corticospinal tract because it is present in the lateral column and it is called corticospinal because it connects cortex to the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord so this lateral corticospinal tract fibers starts in the cerebral cortex so this cerebral cortex there are area number 4 and 6 that is called as motor area and premotor area from there the neuron starts the fiber the axon will start moving downward so these fibers that is uh, the cortico spinal fibers that mainly includes cortico spinal plus as well as cortico nuclear so the all the fibers will run downward these are nothing but upper motor neuron starting from the cerebral cortex that is called as uh, pyramidal cells of beds so the axons of those pyramidal cells of beds which will be involving as well as cranial nerve nuclei so such fibers are called as cortico nuclear fibers similarly these fibers will come and also end in the spinal cord such fibers are called as cortico spinal fiber so you have both cortico nuclear and cortico spinal fiber so these fibers will run downwards as they run downwards they will pass through the an area called as corona radiata like a sun ray appearance all the fibers of the cerebral cortex they are moving downwards then the fibers will compactly arranged once they pass through the corona radiata then the next stage is internal capsule so they will pass through the internal capsule internal capsule uh, it has got various limbs so these fibers will be occupied in the posterior limb of the internal capsule in a small area just imagine whole body motor fibers are arranged in a small uh, area in the internal capsule if that area is damaged the entire opposite half of the body will be paralyzed so after passing through the internal capsule it will pass through the crust cerebra of midbrain so they will pass through the midbrain that is called as crust cerebra of midbrain then the fibers will pass through the pons that is called as basilar part of the pons so it passed through the fibers will pass through the pons so they are descending downwards after the pons they will enter the medulla oblongata so here these fibers will Uh, occupy the pyramid of medulla that's why these are called as pyramidal fibers also so they occupy uh, the pyramid of the medulla so in the lower part of the medulla they will cross to the opposite side so approximately 75 to 80% of the fibers will cross to the opposite side 
Similarly, on this side, the fiber will pass through coronary data, internal capsule, midbrain, pons, and they will and enter the medulla. And the lower part of the medulla, around 75 to 80 percent of the fibers will cross to the opposite side. After crossing to the opposite side, they will occupy the lateral column. This bundle is called as lateral corticospinal tract. It is the one, only one neuron starting from the cerebral cortex to the uh, lateral corticospinal tract. So as they are moving, whenever their destination comes, they will leave and end in the anterior horn cells. So from pyramidal cells of beds from cerebral cortex till the anterior horn cell, this entire neuron is called as upper motor neuron. So they will end on anterior horn cell. Another neuron starts here and it will pass through the ventral route that is a motor route. So from anterior horn cell, the fibers which are moving outwards from the spinal cord to supply the muscle, these are called as lower motor neuron. So this is upper motor neuron. So this is upper motor neuron and this is lower motor neuron. So the crossing will be taking place in the uh, lower part of the medulla. That is 80% of the fibers will cross and occupy uh, lateral corticospinal tract. Remaining fibers, uh, the remaining 20 to 25% of the fibers, they won't cross. They will move downwards in the same uh, in the same side but they will cross to the opposite side in uh, wherever their destination comes at this particular level that is anterior commissure uh, just in front of the gray matter there is an anterior uh, commissure there so it will cross to the opposite side and then they will end on the anterior horn cells so 80 percent of the fibers will cross at the medulla remaining fibers when they won't cross they will move downwards and occupy the anterior column whenever their destination comes they will cross to the opposite side and end on the anterior horn cells so from there the lower motor neuron starts so this is about lateral corticospinal tract as well as anterior corticospinal tract fibers both the fibers lateral and corticospinal as well as anterior corticospinal tract they will be controlling the voluntary skillful activities so this is about the important uh, the motor tract, the descending tract, cortical, spinal tract, as anterior as well as lateral. Coming to, there is a small bundle which is just entro, anterior to the lateral cortical spinal tract that I told is a rubrospinal tract. Rubrospinal tract fibers, they start from the red nucleus. The red nucleus is present in the midbrain. So, as soon as the fibers will start, they will cross to the opposite side and occupy the lateral column and continue downward as a rubrospinal tract. Whenever the destination comes, they will again end on the anterior horn cells. Mainly this rubrospinal tract fibers, they will control the synergy of the muscles as well as the tone of the muscle for a proper action between the agonistic as well as antagonistic uh, muscle fibers. So they will control the muscular activities, uh, unconscious muscular activities. Now coming to the uh, tectospinal tract. Tectospinal tract which is here, the tectospinal tract is nothing but the fibers starting from the superior follicles they will connect to the some of the cranial nerve nuclei as well as the upper cervical segment spinal cord of the upper cervical segment and these uh, fibers tectospinal fibers mainly involved in uh, the movement of coordinated movement of uh, the head neck and the upper limb to the visual stimuli that is the function of tectospinal tract fibers now coming to the vestibular spinal tract fiber vestibular spinal tract they will connect the vestibulospinal, as the name itself indicates, they connect vestibular nucleus of the brainstem to the spinal cord. They mainly provide uh, the balance, they mainly involved in the maintaining the balance and posture. So just imagine the vestibulospinal tract provides the balance and posture and the rubrospinal tract provides the proper tone of the muscle and synergy of the muscle fibers. Once everything is ready, over that the corticospinal fibers will be doing their activity, that is skillful activity. So the, uh, the remaining all these fibers, so they will mainly provide the base so that over that the corticospinal fibers will act. So these other fibers are called as extra pyramidal fibers. Um, now the one more is that that is medial and lateral reticulospinal fibers. These are again reticulospinal uh, fibers, they will be starting from the brainstem and will be ending in the, uh, the anterior horn cells. They will be again involved in the uh, facilitatory or inhibitory activities of the muscles. So this is about the important, uh, the descending tracts or the motor tracts. What you have to remember, in motor system, you have upper motor neuron and a lower motor neuron. In sensory, you have first order, second order, and uh, third order sensory neuron. 
coming to the uh, important applied aspect suppose uh, just imagine if the upper motor neuron is damaged above the uh, what you call it as decussation suppose uh, this part is damaged okay this is on the uh, left side left side the upper motor neuron is damaged above the level uh, so above the uh, decussation before the decussation so what will happen so there will be so these fibers will be controlling opposite half of the body so there will be contralateral spastic paralysis why it is called spastic paralysis because the upper motor neuron controls the lower motor neuron so once the upper motor neuron is damaged the lower motor neuron acts itself as a center and these will be hyperactive and the tone will be increased so when the the corticospinal fiber the upper motor neuron above the level of decussation if it is involved there will be contralateral spastic paralysis suppose if the lower motor neuron is damaged then it leads to because both upper motor function as well as lower motor both gone they lead to flaccid paralysis so that is about uh, the spastic paralysis coming to the uh, the, uh, the applied aspect related to the uh, some of the the ascending fibers sensory fibers okay there is a condition called as uh, syringomyelia in case of syringomyelia what will happen uh, the cavities will appear in the central canal and the cavity will become bigger and bigger and it will mainly damage the fibers which are crossing in front of the uh, the gray matter so the fi which fibers will be crossing here mainly the lateral spinocothalamic tract fibers from this side to this side this side so the lateral and anterior spinothalamic tract fibers will be crossing it leads to the loss of pain and temperature in the segmental level that is about syringomyelia coming to the tapes dorsalis one more clinical condition that is nothing but syphilitic degeneration of the posterior column fibers the posterior column fibers are involved in uh, the the uh, vibration tactile discrimination pressure and uh, uh, two point discrimination okay the conscious proprioception all will be lost in case of tapes dorsalis nothing that is nothing but the syphilitic degeneration of the posterior column fibers one more clinical condition is called as brown sequard syndrome brown sequard syndrome means hemisection of the spinal cord it means half of the spinal cord is completely damaged that is called as hemisection so as i told you in the beginning only on both the sides there will be both ascending as well as descending tract so if half of the part of the spinal cord is damaged it is not only involving the sensory fibers as well as motor fibers are also damaged so what will happen so here also lateral corticospinal tract will be there so th once this area is damaged there will be ipsilateral uh, hemiplegia will be there uh, the same site uh, paralysis will be there then apart from that you have uh, ipsilateral loss of posterior column fibers because these fibers will cross at the level of uh, medulla so what will happen ipsilateral loss of all the posterior column sensation but the fibers which are present here lateral spinothalamic anterior spinothalamic these are coming from the opposite side so there is contralateral loss of pain and uh, pain and temperature loss will be on the contralateral side so in brown sequard syndrome or hemisection of the spinal cord there is ipsilateral paralysis as well as the ipsilateral loss of posterior column fiber sensation and contralateral loss of pain and temperature so this is about the spinal cord ascending and descending tracks with applied aspects thank you